All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Madan Birla. How are you doing, Madan? Good, great. Yeah. Good and, to- and where are you today? I'm in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee, a great part of the world. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, to give you a little bit of background of uh, of Madan, he is a veteran of the hard side of business. He had 22 years at FedEx, including working very closely with Fred Smith, the founder. Uh, and since then, he has um, written a number of books and, and you know, helped companies with the whole idea of creativity. So you wrote The Balance, uh, Balance Life and Leadership in 1997, FedEx Delivers, How the World's Leading Shipping Company Keeps Innovating and Outperforming the Competition in 2005. And 2013, you published Unleashing Creativity and Innovation. And that's kind of what we want to talk about today is this idea of creativity and innovation so i think to be, to begin with uh, madan is how do you create an environment if you like create an environment of creativity if that's not some kind of oxymoron well uh you know creativity is uh is you know exploring what if before we lock into how to mm-hmm. typically in the business world you know when we get a problem uh, the tendency is to go to how to. Right. So at FedEx, we all had a panel board in our offices and you go on the panel board and start writing one, two, three. And creative uh, problem solving requires, you know, taking a time to say, hey, before we lock into how to, let's explore how to. So creativity is strictly how many times people in the organization ask what if. Mm-hmm. And so, so if you were to ask, uh, you know, what was the key to FedEx success? I was fortunate to join them in 79, in the early days, in the startup days. And, and here they are a uh, global company and, uh, you know, from uh, 187 packages to 11 million packages every night. Mm-hmm. So the key is the what if culture. So the company got started when Fred Smith, he was going to school at Yale and he recognized in mid 60s that there would be need for express transportation for right. com- parts and there. And he just asked the question, what if there mm-hmm. was a express airline dedicated to express cargo? So so the meetings you refer to my working with Fred Smith as part of the long range planning committee. In fact, the four hours we met every third Tuesday, uh, the whole agenda was what if. Right. have in Paris. So coming back to uh, us as individuals, so the nature of mind is to think. It is thinking all the time. Mm-hmm. So, so if we can create the right conditions, it would generate creative ideas. So what if requires that connecting dots, dots mean the knowledge base. Mm-hmm. So when someone is given a problem based on your experience and knowledge in the sales or whatever field, uh, your brain does a brain scan and you connect some dots. Right. And you say, this is what we can do for you. You mm-hmm. know, what product or service selling. So it's connecting dots. So the more dots you have, more connections you can make. Dots mm-hmm. being the knowledge base. The more yeah. knowledge, more. So the first condition is, is more dots. So the model I use in the book is called minting ideas. Right. So it is more dots, more knowledge, and then I stand for imagination. Mm-hmm. You know, think the way they have not been connected before. Because typically, you know, well, this is the way we have done it before. Yeah. And and but, that, and that's what I was going to ask you about. One of the things is that it's very typical, as you said, it's very typical that we go to how to and people tend to they do two things. They go to Oh, that sounds like a great idea. This is probably how we could do it. And before you know it, you're down in the weeds. Um, the other part is people also tend to go to, yeah, that's great. But uh, if if like the moon is in Venus and the sun is in Mars and I'm standing on my left foot and it's on a Tuesday, then this could happen and that will just unravel everything. So we go into these crazy exceptions. So those two, dyna- how do you get over those two dynamics? Well, uh, so let's briefly talk about, let me finish the uh, mm-hmm. the conditions, then I'll get into how do you gain acceptance. So so people realize, so, you know, when I'm teaching classes, executive MBA, 
So the 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 condition you want to create is is how many of you want to? I ask them the question. How many of you want to travel all over the world and let somebody else pay for it? Everybody <laughs> raises their hand. How many of you want to retire early? So I said the key is when I'm talking to the CEOs uh, before I speak at Google or any other company, I ask them what keeps you awake at night. Mm -hmm. And the answer is whether I'm in Singapore or Mumbai or uh, or Nashville at Bridgestone is is Medan. You know we can't keep doing the business way we are doing. Yes. We need to change. So everybody has to understand in the company that we have to change. And I know it is easier said than done. Everybody understand intellectually, you know, we need to change. But as you said, you know, change is hard. Mm -hmm. It is, and the hard part is at the emotional level. It is uncomfortable. Like Woodrow Wilson said that if you want to make enemies, try to change things. Mm -hmm. So, so you have more dots and you connect those dots, imagination. And the third condition is what I call nominal stress. That don't, don't just tell people that, you know, we need to be innovative and creative. You know, you need to say we are here today and we need to be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. the creative tension. And the analogy I use is like a violin to create music. You know, if there is no tension on the string, there is no music. Right. And if there too much tension, the string snap. Mm -hmm. So in the business world, so Fred Smith would say to us, those of us who are in the planning engineering, that in the early days, you know, guys, we are damaging one out of thousand packages in our processing in the hub in Memphis overnight. So our goal for next year is one out of 10,000. So he created a creative tension. Now we will find a solution. Right. Because the mind doesn't like creative tension. Mm -hmm. the last condition is time that you must have time to explore what if, time to generate what ifs, time to create more darts. So once you create those conditions that, hey, you know, in this company, for us to grow in this global economy, we have to change. Mm -hmm. And not just the CEO and everybody at the top, it is all of us. So if you were to ask Fred Smith that, you know, what made us successful, certainly he had the ideas, but a lot of flunkies like us mm -hmm. who took his ideas and created those you know, idea. Yeah. So, but but let, let me also ask you again, because you, you said that the nature of change and stuff and people are, are, you know, resistant to change. But yet the reality is that change is constant in our lives anyway. That's the thing that I'm always, that I, I always struggle with is that in our own personal lives, you know, things are happening nonstop and constantly changing. Nothing is static. But when we come into a work context, we often try to almost freeze time and keep everything as is. I mean, that's a difficult thing to overcome with people too, right? Yeah. So the the, the model I use, I did a six-month assignment at a bank uh, in the IT department. And the, uh, 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 the CFO called me and said, you know, uh, in financial services, it is no longer just, you know, we provide, mm -hmm. but... What we are providing is, is IT, which is the part of the service proposition. So I went to the CTO and he said, you know, we have a lot of ideas, but we have a problem getting acceptance of these people in operation. You know, they just don't understand. Mm -hmm. so key in getting acceptance is because if you are working on the idea for last six months and it's very clear to you, you know, all the benefit, you got the Excel spreadsheet, you got the PowerPoint and you know, and you go in a meeting. Mm -hmm. And you present an idea and, and you expect people should jump on it because you know it works, it saves money yep. and you've been working on it. But what you have to understand is, is that people, you know, who are sitting in the conference room or in the operation, they have different perspective. Their view of the world is different. They are not IT technology. They have to deliver those checks every day or whatever mm -hmm. service they are doing. So the first condition for gaining acceptance is when you walk into a room, uh, have you heard of a concept called mirror neurons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mirror neurons is, is that, you know, people can sense and we react to the way, you know, other person is thinking or feeling. So when we look at a baby and you smile and the baby smiles back. Mm -hmm. mirror. So, so if you go into the room and you expect that, man, this is a great idea, you know, it saves a million dollar. People should jump on it. Mm -hmm. And when they don't, you are just kind of thrown back. You know? mm -hmm. If you go into the meeting expecting that people have different perspective, 
you expect that. And then, because what people are looking for is, you are very clear that, you know, we are going to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever operations, customer service or sales. And, but, so I'm saying, John, I'm going to take you to the next level. It's a wonderful place up there. So what literally means is that I have to reach out and say, John, hold my hand. I'm going to take you to the next level. Right. Sales growth, excellence, operations. Mm -hmm. So what that means is I need to understand what your view of the world is because you are not fully there what I can see yep. because I'm at a higher level. So I, so your need at that point is, but then you understand my concern. Mm -hmm. So once I understand that, you know, it is not that I put another PowerPoint slide when you have a question. It is that you want to feel. The key part is feeling that I feel understood. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then understand by. So, so the next uh, uh, skill in getting acceptance is L, E, L, listening to understand versus listening to respond. Mm -hmm. Because question, I want to pull up another PowerPoint slide. No. So that is the analytical side where John is at the feeling side. You are still not comfortable with this change because, you know, these IT guys understand, but they don't know if it's going to work in the operation. Yep. So the, the third is, so the, the, uh, uh, the nomenclature is, is else. So, so what we are looking when we are getting acceptance of ideas is we are not just looking at acceptance. We are looking for its implementation. Mm -hmm. Innovation is three distinct steps. It is generation of ideas, gaining acceptance and implementation. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking for is wholehearted acceptance. Right. Because in implementation, you're going to run into problems. Sure. And if I'm committed to the idea and I buy it, then I'll find a way. Yeah. Work yeah. So, and, if I, and if I'm not, I'm just going to say, yeah, see, told you. Yeah, and we tried it. You know, it doesn't mm. work. So the third is, ELS is speak their language. Mm -hmm. And that's the part when I work with technical people, say so don't speak your language, you know, yeah. in terms of fast cycle, whatever, computer, you know, their language, what it does for them. And then the last one is E. So is expand the ownership of the idea. So I learned it from my boss at RCA in my first job that mm -hmm. don't just go broadcast to the world. Just ask the question, who else do I need for its implementation mm -hmm. and talk to that person one-on-one -on -one and say, John, you know, you know more about your operation than I'll ever know. I need your help. Mm -hmm. If I approach you that way, then you will say, okay, uh, what do you have, Madan? So right. then both of you come and talk to me. This was the VP at right. RCF uh, Manufacturing. So then when, so what people worry about is when they want to gain acceptance is who is going to get the credit for the idea. Right. I tell these students in MBA that don't worry about the credit. Management would know, you know, who had the idea. But you want implementation, so take these people with you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a... Yeah, and, and I think that's a really critical point that you touched on there. I think you're absolutely correct is management knows who makes things successful and especially if you if you as you say if you're able to bring people on board if you're able to share the credit if you're able to have people come together as a team management will still know who the driving force was exactly i mean i'll just tell you a story i mean i been out of fedex 15 years few years ago i was uh, in the headquarters you know uh, cashing some stock options and dropping a check at the legal and Fred Smith in the elevator steps in. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen him for five years since I left. And I'm kind of looking down in the elevator. He said, but then how are you doing? And I look up. I say, Fred, I'm doing well. So as we are going down the elevator, you know, make a small talk. I said, Fred, mm -hmm. I, I saw you at the uh, Tigers basketball game last week. That's a basketball mm -hmm. uh, team. He said, yeah, I go to some games. Then I said, Fred, I need to thank you. He said, for what? I said, you know, lately, only thing doing well in my portfolio is FedEx stock, everything <laughs> going down. And he said, but then you need to have confidence in FedEx stock. You help design the system. <laughs> so here I've left the company and I worked with him 10 years ago, but he still makes it a point to recognize mm -hmm. that when I was there, I helped design the system. Mm -hmm. you know, system is how we pick up a package in Japan and, and deliver right. in Des Moines, mm -hmm. Iowa. So, so management, he still remembers. So mm -hmm. that uh, leadership aspect of getting acceptance is, that you give people credit, you know, recognize. Mm -hmm. And so so it is, 
I used to tell uh, my manager that the key to my success at FedEx was that when I first joined FedEx is in logistics, buying all the material to run FedEx. So I was supporting seven departments. And I told my secretary, make sure at least once a quarter, I'm having lunch with my peer director. Right. So a personal relationship. So now when I go with an idea or my people go to their department, they get in hearing because mm-hmm. there is a relationship. So the key in selling ideas is, is really because if you know a person, then you have a different reaction to that idea yeah. versus somebody just walking in. Mm-hmm. And it's the same in whether you're selling an idea or whether you're, to be honest, whether you're selling a product is, especially nowadays, is you right. have to, is you're rarely selling to one single person. Um, you have to build a coalition, uh, a positive coalition around what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, uh, sales, you know, at FedEx, all of us directors and above were required to make sales call, mm-hmm. you know, at least a couple of times a year because that's where the base business is and delivering packaging. And I would make sales call and talk to the CFO in DC or at Circuit City in Oklahoma City or in Hong Kong. And the key, the whole purpose of that call was just let them know yeah. that we are here to serve you. And only question, what could you be doing differently to serve you better? Mm-hmm. Not would have a, but we created a relationship. So he would have my card, he could call me up. He says, Madan, in the corporate side, you know, you guys are taking too long in my contract. So those simple relationships, which, you know, sell the product for the company. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it seems to me that um, with with your model for gaining, an, you know, acceptance of ideas, it just means that you just you need to incorporate that into your planning rather than just say, I'm going to create an idea, then we're going to figure then we're just going to go to straight to implementation. There is that selling piece Middle in step. between. Who else do I need? Mm-hmm. for a successful implementation. And the key is, you know, if there is a key person or two key person, uh, like even selling into a corporate mm-hmm. side, mm-hmm. don't go to the president or the higher up, just ask them, he says, you know, the other thing I would suggest on the sales side is that you always want to ask the question, uh, what is the business purpose? You know, you mm-hmm. are trying to sell, yeah. not just this product, which will save this thing or this thing, if you can relate to the higher purpose. So the FedEx became successful because when Smith said to us, we are in the peace of mind business. Mm. We have trucks and airplane and we ship. No, because why is somebody paying us $20 versus $5? So that answering that question, you know, put us on the path to say, how can we give peace of mind? And that's when we came up with the uh, tracker and, you know, the whole right. online tracking. Um, uh, looks like the uh, the connection. No, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. So, so same thing. You know, when I would go to a sales call, mm-hmm. uh, to mm-hmm. Best Buy or whichever you know account I was assigned with, I would ask them, "What is the purpose of that business? Yeah. Customer experience." Yeah. So then we go in and and talk about what can we do to enhance your customer experience. I mean, at the uh, land's end, one of our main point for selling FedEx was that when people are ordering online, they want to get it as soon as they can. Mm-hmm. And so here is FedEx, you are paying more for shipping, but it arrives next to two days. But more importantly, you know, when you have 20 pieces on your desk of mail, if you got a FedEx envelope, we have created the mind of awareness absolutely positively overnight, they're gonna mm-hmm. open that first. So, so it adds to your brand value, you know, Mm-hmm. that you are shipping by FedEx. So so just relating to where the person is at and because one question I ask the leaders, you know, what is the purpose of leadership or purpose of sales? Is? The purpose is that we are trying to aid the organization mm-hmm. to the next level of growth and excellence. So what can we do with our product and services to help you go to the next level? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's all about that you are, I mean, if you're in sales, you're there. You said FedEx is in the peace of mind business. I mean, whatever you're selling, your 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 idea has to be that this product or service is going to enhance their business or their experience in some way. So again, you're not in the selling a product or, or service business, you're in the creating some positive outcome. Exactly. And, you know, we asked that question every year. So it was peace of mind in the 80s. 
And then we said, no, we are in the supply chain management business. Mm -hmm. With, uh, the uh, limited store getting from China, their dresses and their, and if we can bring it sooner, because the fashion merchandise have to be on the shelves and limited shelf life. So then you say, we can manage your supply chain. And so you can, so just think of the airplane as the warehouse is in the sky. Yeah. So you can see, you don't have to maintain inventory. You just tell us and you can see what is coming in that box and what is in there. And we will take directly to the store and there. So you keep asking that question and you keep relating to the higher business purpose. Yeah, that this has been this has been fascinating, Madan. Like absolutely fascinating, and um, I'd love you to come back again at some stage because I'd like you to talk about the other part about the the um, creativity and balance. Uh, you know, maybe you'll come back at another time and we'll do a whole session on that. But before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you. Well, uh, you know, as uh, John mentioned, I've been. Uh, last 15 years enjoying reading, writing, and talking about creativity, innovation, and then work-life balance. And uh, uh, I speak at businesses around the world and at business schools. Uh, that's my joy and passion at this stage. And play golf a couple of times a week. <laughs> uh, so they can go to medanberla.com on my website and look at the books I've published and, uh, and the talks I've given. Uh, in fact, in a couple of months, I'm speaking to YPO on leadership and life balance. These are the young president mm -hmm. organization. Because in creativity, a stressed mind is not in a creative mode. Right. A stress says, but then let me get through today. Uh, so this can be a subject of the next conversation. Mm -hmm. How balance help unleash creativity. Because uh, if that is the key to your career success and key to your org growth, and and if you are stressed out, then you are really not being as creative as you could be. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I look forward to having that uh, second part of the conversation because this has been really fascinating today. Uh, again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you for another Expert Insight interview really soon. Thank you.